Hey everyone, the story I'm going to share is largely the most ineffable, complete experience and the biggest release of my life. So um, I'll start back on my birthday on March 17th. It was my 30th birthday and I had a DMT ceremony. I had the DMT ceremony with the particular strand called NNDMT, which happens to be the more popular form of it. It's typically the one people are referring to when you hear the term DMT, uh, which is short for dimethyltryptamine. And um, during my birthday ceremony, I had a, an incredibly miraculous experience where I was encountering uh, beings of other dimensions in particular. I shared uh, time with this incredible goddess that was sort of octopus-like and had tentacles and was communicating infinite love. And she existed in the 7th through 11th dimensions. And how I know that with my logical mind is sort of unclear to me, but that's what I intuited and knew in the moment. And um, after that ceremony, I was speaking with the shaman and... Um, she and I were discussing the idea that NNDMT is largely third eye related. So it's typically a visual and visionary type experience. Now, in this ceremony, I also had the opportunity to observe death. So I saw it there, death as, let's say, sort of a concept. And I realized that at any moment, I can engage with death and understand it and be it and die. And this needn't be through, you know, any act of what we would perceive as suicide or um, any sort of physical um, experience but, but by some sort of accident or anything like that, but rather simply consciously choosing to die in a moment. Um, there are actually a lot of yogis who can simply meditate and die, and they'll even announce it in advance that they say they're going to choose death. And... Um, so in my ceremony, I saw death and I had the opportunity to engage with it. But in that moment, I, I chose simply to observe it because I wasn't sure if I'd be able to come back from it. Um, I figured I would be, but it wasn't a risk I wanted to take. Um, you know, I'm only 30 years old and uh, I really enjoy this life. Um, as much as I'm curious about death, I just, I didn't feel like it was the time, you know? So, um, but... Anyway, the, so the shaman and I were talking about that death experience and being this sense of completion and being more about absolution and uh, crown chakra related. And then she mentioned to me 5-MeO-DMT, which is what uh, this story is about. And 5-MeO-DMT is sometimes referred to as the death molecule or the god molecule. And earlier this week, I had the opportunity to have a ceremony with this medicine on uh, Monday morning at 10 a.m. And so I, uh, I met the, this is a different shaman, and I'll call him uh, Todd for the purpose of this story. And um, I met him in an apartment, the, um, just very simply laid out a couch, a, a thin mattress with a pillow on the floor and the moment I met him we embraced with a, a deep and long hug and you know recognized a very brotherly connection immediately and uh, we had been communicating via email uh, and phone prior to then. Um, so this uh, this 5-MeO DMT is um, also called the toad medicine at least in the particular form that Todd offers it and so the the medicine actually comes from the Bufo alvarius toad, which is native to the Sonoran Desert, which uh, is in North America. And the way that um, the 5-MeO-DMT is cultivated is by rubbing the toad's glands, and then it shoots out a venom, and you catch the venom on a pane of glass, and then you simply let that venom dry on the pane of glass. And then you take the crystals that form, and uh, you smoke them. So um, Todd and I went through, we had, we had a conversation and then we went through some breath work um, in order to just simply prime my body for a large 
uh, inhalation and one that I would be able to hold for a long period of time. Um, so we, we practiced some breathing for about five minutes and then I had an introductory dose of the 5-MeO-DMT and um, so this practice is using um, a much smaller amount than for the larger dose that I take a bit later on. But the, uh, the introductory dose is, is simply intended to you know, familiarize me with um, some of the sensations, with the process of inhaling the medicine, and um, uh, yeah, just, just get, gaining a familiarity for it. So I took the, um, it's, uh, it, was, it was like a beaker from science class, if, uh, from your high school science class. And um, the, the crystals of the DMT were at the bottom, and Todd took a torch to the uh, outside of the glass and heated up the crystals, which then started smoking inside of the beaker. And there was a rubber stopper with a straw-like glass tube that um, connected to it. And so you inhale through the straw, and um, you hold it um, for an extended period of time. And uh, so when I did that, for anyone who's familiar with any form of DMT, it was it was similar to that when the sacred geometric patterns and like colorful lights start washing over me. Um, but I, I maintained my consciousness the whole time, and as I mentioned, it was a smaller dose, so the experience was very um, warming of the body and quite um, you know wavy, and uh, it felt uh, really pleasurable, but. I can also see how if um, somebody was resisting it, it could be uncomfortable, but I, I really enjoy it. Um, and uh, yeah, it was a nice little introduction. So that experience, I was um, in this beautiful space where my body was sort of free flowing and rolling up and down and I would drop my head and it would just, I was aware of every movement and I, I could have disengaged from the medicine at any point. Um, my mind certainly could have overridden it, but um, it was also quite easy to just allow the experience. So that introductory um, uh, dose probably lasts about 10 minutes and then it was time for the um, much larger dose and with DMT um, I think virtually everyone requires a certain amount of dose um, in order to have a breakthrough experience and um, so Todd put that amount into the beaker and then lit it and uh, this time a much more um, concentrated and thicker smoke began brewing in the beaker and it filled it up and as I was inhaling it felt like I was drinking a mil milkshake and I, I breathed as much as I could in um, probably for about a you know 20 to 30 or 40 seconds and it filled my lungs and then just it washed over me and words. Um, I was gone. Um, Michael Sanders no longer existed. It was the total dissolution of ego to the point that the concept of Michael Sanders was no longer even a concept. There was no place in my awareness that would have even been able to conceptualize Michael Sanders. I became and re or more uh, more precisely I remembered that I am infinity and so are you. Um, there weren't really any colors or visuals although I have a memory of feeling color but I think color still represents some separation because there are different colors. And in total union and oneness, I don't believe that colors exist. And I also have the memory and the feeling of sound, a deep, unifying, infinite sound like Oh, 
but again, I don't believe that that sound explicitly occurred. It's just a feeling that I had, and it was simply total oneness. And I'm not even entirely sure I remember what happened during this time span, which in the moment felt like eternity because I was and am infinity. But in Earth human time, I learned it was perhaps about five minutes. Um, after which... I became aware of the fact that I was experiencing this oneness. So I remained in the infinite space, but I also had thought and realized that I was observing something. And um, my friend Guy Crittenden had a, had a ceremony later on that day, and he said something to the effect of that it wasn't as though, and I'll just replace what he said with my name for the purpose of this story. So it wasn't as though Michael Sanders went and consumed the toad medicine and remembered that he was infinity. It was sort of like infinity interacted with the toad medicine and left the matrix and totally forgot about the concept of the avatar that is Michael Sanders. Um, and in this space of oneness and no separation, uh, total non-duality, which I recognize when I say these things, they are only words, and that to truly know this, one must feel it. My words can dance around what I experienced but they can never directly impart that experience to the listener or to the viewer um, but I, I continue to try to get clo as close as I can which I largely think is one of my uh, greatest purposes and joys or at least joys in this world is to share um, these sorts of experiences and um, in this oneness, seeing that nothing is separate, all of time, all of space, any dream that you want to manifest that seems like is across some great chasm or there's a bridge that you need to cross, that bridge is a total illusion. Everything that you want and you desire is immediately and always accessible to you. There is no separation between anything. And this is an incredibly blissful form of awareness and remembering. Remembering the divinity that we are, that all things are, this, this oneness. Total formlessness. There is no form in this space. And... Wow, it's um, perhaps the most difficult thing I've ever tried to describe, um, but absolutely beautiful. And during this time, I, when, when I was aware of the oneness that I am and was observing, I rolled out onto the floor and my body was so open, so relaxed, more so than it's ever been in my entire life. All tension vanished. It was just totally gone. And I was slobbering and spitting just like, <laughs> just simply because it felt good and that I was marveling at the idea that I could do such a thing. Because it was like I was going back and forth in between the knowing that I can exist in a body as all of infinity and being infinity without a body. And so just <laughs> was so joyous and felt so wonderful. And then 
what was interesting, or one of the things that was interesting, is that Todd was over here, and I couldn't see him with my two, uh, these two eyes, and yet his face was directly in front of me, according to my third eye and my visions, like directly in front of me. But what was so fascinating is that he was not separate from me. I was him. There was no separation. Imagine you were hanging out with a friend and seeing them, but then being them and not even un fully understanding how you are perceiving them because you are them. So the vision that you're seeing of them can't make sense to your logical mind because you are them. And it, just a total merging and then the realization that all things are that, that are one. Even to the point that I, I, my mind almost jumped in and suggested like, oh, I wish everyone could experience this. And then realizing that everyone is experiencing this because we're all expressions of this infinity and this oneness. And I, I stared at the ceiling for a while and it started taking form. But then I could just go into it and everything would become uniform again, and it was total bliss and oneness. And I'm not sure how else I can describe the experience, but as I was, let's say, coming out of it and remembering who I am as Michael Sanders, um, I touched the couch behind me, and just touching it, felt so good and what flooded my awareness is there is such joy in bringing form to the formless and that is what I think we are doing here is that we are infinity this formlessness of infinite potential we can do anything think of all the things that exist in the entire cosmos and beyond that and then in other dimensions it, literally nothing is impossible and anything we can imagine we can do and so to feel to understand to know to remember that let's say ability that gift that we bestow to and upon and for ourselves and for everything and everyone else is just such an incredible, miraculous thing that we're doing because it's, it's totally boundless and limitless and it's just so much love. And... Um, In, in sort of researching in the couple of days that have followed, I've watched a few videos of others speaking about 5-MeO-DMT as being a tool for enlightenment and that in one experience you can just attain enlightenment. And not that one necessarily will, um, but it's certainly in my mind, the most powerful psychedelic experience and technology that I know of. And I can confidently say that I know death through that experience because you die in it and you know I've, I've come back as Michael Sanders and I'm still passionate about all the same things and um, and my values are remain the same because I mean I've been sort of on a journey um, in these realms for a long time um, and this experience of oneness is something that I feel and have felt wholeheartedly for quite some time and that I've known. Um, 
but through the 5-MEO, it was just a, a different form of remembering and um, perhaps the most powerful one. Um, so... Uh, it's such a gift, all of it, everything that we are. It's so wonderful. So um, I think I'll just leave it there. And uh, I love all of you.